afternoon, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Anne Marie Schubert. I am the District Attorney of Sacramento County, and I'm one of the co-chairs of this initiative. Uh, at the same time as all of us are standing here today in front of you, the same thing is occurring in Sacramento, California, by Assemblyman Jim Cooper, who is a Democratic Assembly member from Sacramento, uh, who represents my jurisdiction. And they are standing in front of a, uh, a well-known nonprofit organization in Sacramento called WEAVE, which is Women Escaping a Violent Environment, to talk about the importance of this initiative. I'd like to first introduce the folks that are standing behind you to tell you that um, the leadership and the passion and the persistence behind this initiative is very strong and it's very clear by the presence of the individuals that are standing behind us. Um, there are probably, if my numbers are correct, well over a dozen elected district attorneys across California that are standing behind me and standing with us with this initiative. And I want to first introduce those individuals. So other than myself, we have Greg Totten, the district attorney of Ventura County. Dan Dow, the district attorney of San Luis Obispo County. Laura Creed, the district attorney of Tuolumne County. Allison Haley, the district attorney of Napa County. Tony Rakakis, Orange County district attorney. Mike Hestron, Riverside County district attorney. Stephanie Bridget, Shasta district attorney. Matt Beecham, Calusa district attorney. Tim Ward, Tulare district attorney. Lisa Green, Kern County District Attorney. Dean Flippo, Monterey District Attorney. We cover the entire state here to support this initiative. In addition to the district attorneys that are here, we have members of law enforcement and crime victims. And I, I probably should first say that we are witty or strong, and that's why we're here. So I'm proud to be standing behind, or in front of, I should say, the mayor of Whittier, Mayor Vinatieri, uh, the city council representative standing with me. Um, but again, we are here um, because we are here to honor the memory of Officer Boyer and to explain why we are here to not only reduce crime, but to keep California safe under this initiative. So in addition to being Whittier strong, we are law enforcement strong, and that is with members of the Los Angeles uh, Police Protective League, the Association of Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs, uh, the Santa Ana Police Officers Association and other representatives of law enforcement across California. And probably most importantly, we are here on behalf of victims of crime and crime victims across California. And we have representatives here, Patricia from Crime Survivors of Southern California, to tell us why we're all here to protect our community. So as, um, as a career prosecutor, um, we're here to tell you why this initiative is being launched and the signature gathering of efforts are being started here uh, in Southern California as well as Northern California. This initiative uh, is designed to be very balanced. It's designed to not only keep California safe, to reduce crime. It's designed to make sure that people understand that when you rape an unconscious person, when you commit human trafficking, when you commit domestic violence, that yes, you should not be getting out of prison early because that is a violent crime. It's designed to tell us that when um, somebody commits a crime, we want to have every tool necessary, and that includes the collection of DNA so that we can solve crimes. Uh, most people don't know this, but I grew up in Sacramento, and when I was 12 years old, we had a very famous person rape upwards of 50 women. His name in Sacramento is the East Area Rapist. Down here in Southern California, he's now known as the Golden State Killer. He raped 35 women starting in 1976. He's murdered 12 people, culminating in 1986. We have yet to sol solve that crime, but we need DNA laws, the best tools that we can get to in fact solve that series. We're here on, on behalf of victims. We're on here on behalf of businesses that we want to stop serial theft in this state. And we're here on behalf of law enforcement that when somebody violates the terms and conditions of their parole or release, that they should go back to court because people like Officer Boyer should never have been the victim of an individual that had been violated most of the time, uh, several times with never going back to court. So with that, um, I'm here to introduce several speakers, the first of which I'm honored to introduce, and that is the president of the Association of Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs, Ron Fernandez.
Hi, my name is Ron Hernandez. I'm the president of the Association for Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs. Uh, I represent approximately 7,700 deputy sheriffs in LA County. Uh, I just want to say, short and sweet, uh, the reason I'm in support of this is uh, Props 47 and 57, uh, a lot of times some of the stuff isn't clear, and I think if we readdress some of the issues and solve those issues, it will not only make the streets safer for the communities uh, that we protect, but it will also make it safe for those law enforcement officers and deputy sheriffs that go out there and try and protect those communities. And I think we've all seen uh, over the last year and several months uh, how much more violence there seems to be out there for the communities and law enforcement. And that's why the Association for Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs is here to support this. Thank you. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite up District Attorney Greg Totten from Ventura County. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here with my prosecutor colleagues my sisters and brothers that are on the front lines of law enforcement in our communities across the state, countless elected officials and crime victims to support this very important policy proposal, the Keeping California Safe Act of 2018. Now at its core, this initiative is a very sound and very measured public policy improvement that will help us better protect all Californians, and it will help us solve crimes for the victims that have longed for justice, in some cases, for many decades. One of the important things it does is it recognizes that there are certain types of crimes committed by pernicious criminals, criminals who prey on women, who prey on children, who commit the unspeakable acts of rape, sexual assault, human trafficking, child abduction, horrible crimes that for some strange reason here in California are not defined as violent felonies. This initiative will change that. And it will also, in doing that, recognize that individuals who commit those crimes are not entitled to early release <laughs> under the early release law that was enacted uh, more recently. We will also recognize they are not entitled to leniency. The nature of the crimes they committed forfeited any benefits that they might get in the way of leniency. The second aspect of this, as I mentioned, there are crime victims that are crying out for justice, who have lost children, who have lost spouses, who have lost other loved ones to violent murders. Many of those cases to this day remain unsolved. Those victims deserve justice. The people that are before you believe those victims deserve justice. We know that if our database that we rely upon to solve cases through DNA is expanded, we are going to solve more cases. We are going to bring more serial killers to justice. The case that Anne Marie mentioned, the East Area Rapist or the Golden State Killer, one of the very first cases I worked on as a young law clerk in the district attorney's office was the murder of a couple, Lyman and Charlene Smith. In the privacy of their own home, it was absolutely a brutal and horrific crime that even today, more than 30 years later, is recognized as one of the most horrific crimes in the history of Ventura County. That case today remains unsolved. Why wouldn't we want to expand our DNA database to allow us to increase our chances of solving that case and countless others? We also know that many people who commit thefts have serious drug problems, have serious addiction problems. Our current law doesn't give us the teeth. It does not give us the tools to take those people and force them into treatment programs. By enacting a serial theft uh, offense in this, in this initiative, we'll be able to change that. And finally, people that are most dangerous in our community, that are in every community across this state, 
are parolees, people who have been recently released from prison. When they violate the terms and conditions of their parole, why wouldn't we want them to be forced into court before a judge so that somebody can objectively and reasonably evaluate what they've done and hold them accountable? Doing so might have saved a life of Officer Boyer. So I am here today to announce my strong support of this initiative, and we've got our work cut out for us. I thank you all for being here. Thank you. I would like to introduce now the Mayor of Whittier, Joe Vinatieri. see so many local residents, so many local elected leaders and council colleagues from the City of Downey, City of Whittier, City of Santa Fe Springs, and I probably forgot somebody, but we're all here united for one thing. It was only 11 months ago that we were in front of this very memorial to remember wounded officer Patrick Hazel and honor our fallen officer Keith Boyer, who was horrifically gunned down only several blocks from this location, ground zero for the beginning of this movement to keep California safe again. For those of you who didn't know Officer Boyer, Keith had a smile on his face, and when he'd see me, he'd say, hey, hi, Joe, or hi, Mr. Mayor. He was a good police officer. He was a good father. He was a good man. So why was Keith gunned down? because of a fundamental flaw in the prison, quote unquote, reform laws. You see, his gang member murderer was on a post-release community supervision and had violated his probation, counted five times. And yet he was still on the street. He should have been behind bars. So this initiative that we're asking for your support today among other reforms, to make sure that upon a third violation, that felon would be in front of a judge and back in prison or in jail off the street. Keith would have been alive today if this initiative had been in effect just 11 months ago. As leaders, our number one responsibility, especially at the local government le level, DAs, local electeds, our number one responsibility is ensure your safety, the safety of the public, the safety of our families. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not as safe as we should be. And this decline in our safety started shortly after AB 109 and Prop 47 came into being. If the politicians in Sacramento who enacted this great experiment that we call prison reform, can't be counted on to keep us safe, then the only person who can do it is us. That's why we're here today. That's why we're pushing this initiative. Enough is enough. We need everyone to go door to door, take the petitions, get them filled out by registered voters, go online, fill out the petition. We have them here today for you. It's time that we as neighbors, friends, families, residents, take back our communities. that we protect our officers as they protect us. It's time that we stand up and be counted. Won't you come along, please? Come alongside, be a part of this movement. Keep California safe again. Please come alongside. Are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? Yes. 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 I'd like to introduce the Orange County District Attorney, Tony Rakakis. Good afternoon. So we find ourselves at a time right now where we, we have to fix some things. We have to make some corrections in the laws. As you can see from uh, 
uh, from what's been happening, there's been a lot of change in the laws in the recent uh, in the recent years. Uh, there's been there's been realignment. There's been Prop 47. There's been these different things, and uh, and as, as a result, um, in in many areas, uh, some of these uh, some of these changes, although uh, well intended, have gone too far. We have to work to keep people safe. We have to work to keep the police safe. Uh, we have to work to make sure that uh, people who are uh, violent criminals and criminals of all kinds are, are held accountable. And a lot of what's happened here is that the accountability or the teeth has been taken out of much of this law. Like, for example, Prop 47, where Proposition 47 has uh, uh, reduced the, the penalty for repeated petty theft. So people can steal and commit petty theft uh, uh, to their heart's content. No number of, of uh, petty thefts can ever be as things are now. No number of repeated petty thefts can uh, wind up uh, with a felony, so people just get, get these uh, tickets, kind of like traffic tickets for petty theft, and they and they just keep doing it over and over again. There's uh, uh, because of the reductions of many cases were felonies and now misdemeanors under Prop 47. Uh, a lot of people have left drug treatment. And one of the things that was thought when Prop 47 went into effect was that uh, well, let's treat these people uh, who are addicted to drugs and so forth that don't incarcerate them. But what happened was. Uh, with the reduction of accountability for uh, for, for using and, and repeatedly being under the influence of uh, various kinds of narcotics went down to uh, to a misdemeanor so people decided they didn't need treatment they that they, the penalty wasn't uh, enough to uh, require them to stay in their treatment programs another uh, consequence of prop 47 that I think the the voters people who voted on prop 47 didn't know didn't intend and didn't uh, have any idea is that uh, that it, it shrinks our ability to uh, get DNA from various criminals who uh, whose profiles should be on the on the DNA database because uh, these are people who commit maybe not just drug crimes but other kinds of crimes and if if our if we have them have their profiles on the DNA database we're likely we in fact we're going to solve a good deal more crime than we're solving now so uh, rather than shrinking the DNA database we need to at least keep uh, the provisions that we had before Proposition 47, which this this uh, uh, initiative is going to do. So, like <coughs> District Attorney Totten said from Ventura, this is a balanced initiative uh, that takes a reasonable approach to put together some of the things that uh, uh, that need to be fixed in our laws. And so, uh, I look forward to uh, working on this to get the signatures and to get this put into law so that we can. Uh, bring California back to where it needs to be. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce the president of the Los Angeles Association of Deputy District Attorneys, Michelle Hannessy. Good afternoon. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here in the city of Whittier, which was one of my very first assignments as a deputy district attorney nearly 20 years ago. So the city and its police department is dear to my heart. But I'm really here to represent the 1,000 Los Angeles County prosecutors who work in this city and all over the county of Los Angeles. We support this initiative because it gives us and the police the tools that we need to protect our communities, and that is the most important thing to us. It increases supervision of parolees and gives accountability to, for parole violations back to the courts where it ought to be. It eliminates early release for violent crimes that everyone in the public agrees are violent, like rape of an unconscious person, like assault on a police officer. And one of the most important things this initiative does, it restores DNA collection for crimes that it was eliminated for by accident as a collateral consequence of some prior legal changes. DNA, as you know, is the gold standard in court for evidence. And not only is it an important tool for police and prosecutors to solve violent crimes, it's also an important tool to exonerate the innocent. So it is valued by both sides of the table in court. And this initiative will help solve violent crimes and exonerate the innocent by, by reinstating DNA collection for certain violent crimes. So LA County prosecutors absolutely support this initiative and we encourage the public to sign the petitions when you see them and vote yes on the ballot. Thank you very much. Thank you, 
But Michelle, lastly, um, for those of us that work in the trenches, prosecutors and law enforcement, we do this on behalf of victims of crime. And so it's fitting for us to end this with a crime victim survivor, Patricia, to tell us why this matters so much to victims across California. and I am the founder and CEO of Crime Survivors. We are a nonprofit organization providing support and guidance to all victims of crime throughout Southern California. Families of murderers, survivors of attempted murder and rape, domestic violence, sexual assault, child abuse, elder abuse, and human trafficking. And I'm honored and humbled to stand here um, with all of these individuals behind me that work effortlessly day in and day out. District attorneys, deputy district attorneys, probation officers, law enforcement, community members, nonprofits. We cannot do this alone. You know, when I look back at April 4th of 2002, I was a victim. Um, I am today a survivor of attempted murder. Now our justice system failed us, although people did an amazing job and did everything they could to get justice for me, for my family, for our communities. He served approximately 120 days. But the blessing and the gift was that I survived. But then in 2003, when I started the organization Crime Survivors, I started it to make sure that one victim's voice was heard, that we were united as a community to provide justice, to balance the scales of justice. And in 2017, I stand here today feeling as if I am a failure that our organization has failed our community. Now I know I'm not a failure because I have been eating and sleeping and breathing our organization 24 seven. And I know that we have made a great difference and we have been able to collaborate and partner throughout Southern California with some amazing district attorneys, some amazing law enforcement departments, associations and foundations. I have been able to collaborate and partner with nonprofits that truly go above and beyond. After Marcy's law passed, I thought we were gonna have some balancing to our scales of justice. I thought I seen a difference where our communities were uniting together so that victims' voices were heard and that we were gonna get justice. But after AB 109 and Prop 47 and Prop 57, where are we at today? What have we done wrong that I as a survivor and as a community leader feel like I failed victims? What is it when we are in 2018 actually, uh, and we actually get calls day in and day out where I have rape victims, I have domestic violence victims saying, I'm not going to law enforcement. I'm not going to report it because he's only gonna serve six months or he's gonna get uh, out anyway. Why should I report it? You know, each and every one here today, you could be a victim. I didn't expect to have to fight for my life on April 4th of 2002. A rape victim, no matter what she's wearing, no matter what she's saying, no matter what she's doing, it's not her fault. We need to unite together to show these victims that they do matter and that any one of us could be victimized. Wouldn't we want to have rights? Wouldn't we want to have justice in our community? I plead to you today. I'm here today as a survivor that's thriving in my life, that's being able to support victims, to collaborate and partner with everyone and anyone that will listen and come to unite with us. I ask you to sign these petitions today. I ask you to get your checkbooks out and donate and contribute. We need to take back our communities. Public safety and victims, we need to unite for them because any one of you, as I mentioned, could be a victim and will need to be able to have the support, the resources, the justice that we should be providing to our victims in this legal system, and you will need everyone that's standing behind us to be able to support you and your family so that you can break the cycle of victimization. You can have hope, you can have healing, and you can survive and thrive. So when you're considering whether or not you should sign this, whether or not you should give your dollars, whether or not you should support it, think about all the little three-year-olds that have been molested or raped or sexually assaulted or murdered. Think about those families that are struggling to be able to find the resources and the support and justice. We need each and every one of you here today to join our force to be able to make California safe again. I thank you very much. much so that ends with our our uh, speakers I would just think I'd like to just summarize why we're here today um, we're victim strong we're law enforcement strong we're community strong we're Whittier strong we're Los Angeles County strong and we're California strong
and we're here yep. to give back our community. So thank you all for coming. There are many folks standing behind me that would be wel welcome the opportunity to speak to any of the media or anybody that has questions about why this initiative is so important and that it's in fact not only going to get on the ballot, but it's going to pass in November of this year. So thank you all.